In this video, we'll talk about how to set up processing profile for relativity. This is by no means an exhaustive guide on every feature in the relativity processing. We're just talking about some of the more important things that you need to configure in processing profile and what I think they should be configured as what are the best practices in my opinion. We are using relativity 95309. So let's take a look at processing profile and how to set it up. Uh, as always, we're going to give a processing profile a name and you want it to be a descriptive name. Uh, the other thing you don't want to do is reuse profile and keep changing settings in it. Because once you publish some documents into your workspace, you may want to go back and see, wait, what were the settings used for this data? And then you already changed it and you don't know and you have to go to audit and try to figure that out. So you want to have different pro processing profiles. So we'll create one called uh, EDT, uh, let's say global dedupe, right? So we know this is going to be for Eastern time zone and we're doing global deduplication. Next, we need to set up our document number and prefix. Uh, some people like to do this per custodian. Uh, some like to do it just globally, whatever number. Uh, relativity does REL by default, which is fine. The only problem with it is once you have REL in multiple workspaces, it becomes a little bit confusing as to which document client is talking about. Sometimes you have client that works in multiple workspaces and they say, can you take a look at this document? and you don't know which which workspace that is or if they try to if they want to migrate documents from one workspace to another you will have duplicate doc ids problems so i recommend keeping prefix if not by custodian at least different by workspace so you never have document with the same document id in any of your workspaces in this case i'm just going to leave it how relativity does rel Next, we have an option for numbering. We can do order number, define and start number. Order number is generally fine. Padding to 10 digits is fine as well. I leave those numbers as default. This way, when I make a new profile, I don't have to reference how it was before. Uh, defaults are generally fine. Now, when I started using processing uh, in relativity, we did not have an option to um, how, how the children are going to get numbered. So it was always suffixed. And at first I was kind of down on this option. I didn't really like it and not everyone was into it as well. Uh, but now that I'm using it more and more, I, I actually see an advantage to it. And if you have a newer version of relativity, you could set it to a continuous numbering. So that number goes from you know one to whatever. Um, but when you suffix, you get a dot zero zero one for your first attachment dot zero zero two for a second attachment and if that attachment has other embedded documents it gets an extra suffix added on top of that suffix um i i kind of like that option this way if i'm looking at a document and i say well i want to see the whole family all i gotta do is just take the first uh part of the number paste it into my filter and i get all the documents and all the attachments in it so it works kind of well and it also works well in relativity or if you export your data outside to Excel or something else, you can easily find your families. And then you also have a delimiter here. How do you want to delimit suffixes? Again, it's personal preference, dot underscore, whatever. Moving on to our inventory settings, uh, DNIST, this is where we're going to remove our system files. Um, unless you have like a um, forensic image of someone's laptop that has like a Windows folder, uh, this is generally not needed. Uh, if you are loading a lot of junk files, you can turn that on. Um, we don't need it in this case, so I'm going to turn it off. Um, however, when you do use the nest, I recommend you don't break parent and attachment. Um, I guess if there was a system file attached to something else, um, I mean, it seems very unlikely, but this option is there. Um, one of the things relativity does when it ingests data is it does OCR. So you want to uh, set up a proper OCR language here. So we're going to select English and this opens sort of another topic of conversation between you and your client. Are you expecting documents in other language other than English? Um, you can do language identification using analytics, but unfortunately that happens after all the data has been loaded and the advantage of selecting 
correct language at the import settings, your PDFs or any non-searchable documents will get OCR automatically at ingestion. So it's always a good idea to have this conversation. Are we expecting any foreign language documents? Do we expect Spanish, Chinese, anything else? And then you need to add all these languages here so you get good results in OCR. As far as time zone goes, just uh, add whatever time zone you need. In our case, we are doing Eastern. So let's select that, click set. And now we're gonna be processing in the Eastern time zone. Extract children. Uh, we do want to extract children and attachments. And here we can say what we do not want to extract. And one thing I generally don't want to extract is email inline images. Those are signatures and things that are pasted in the email. Those things make sense in the context of an email and when you pull them out, they kind of don't make sense. And then as far as embedded images and objects, that's up to you whether you want to uh, extract them or not. Uh, just note that it says do not extract. So we are removing, uh, we're not extracting inline images, but we are extracting all these. But again, that's up to you how you want to do that. Moving on to text extraction method. Uh, we can either use native or DT search. Uh, native text extraction method gives you better results. Uh, DT search is faster. DT search generally doesn't extract data from uh, header information and a few other places in, um, in a native file. But it is a faster option. Native option uh, had an issue where processing engine would crash sometimes or it would get stuck on the infinite loop where uh, one worker would crash, the other one would pick up a job, crash, and then the other one restart, would grab the same job and crash again. So there were a few issues with native. Um, problem here that I don't like personally is that we have two options. And if two people process same data and they run, say, uh, let's say a keyword search, they may get different results based on the text extraction method that was selected. I would prefer the relativity, just pick one method, stick with it, and that's it. You know, if you're gonna go with DT search, just be DT search on every version and done. This way you don't have two vendors process same set of data and get different results. You know, that, that I think is bad. Once we got our text extraction method, we want to say, do we want to OCR documents where text was not extracted? Then yes, you generally want to enable it. OCR accuracy, now um, again, medium is usually fine and OCR text separator is enabled. I don't mind seeing it. If somebody doesn't like seeing that, you can certainly turn that off. Uh, deduplication, we are doing global deduplication for this case because, well, we named our profile global dedupe and we want to do deduplication. Uh, deduplication happens at the time of publishing, not time of ingestion. So keep that in mind. And then do we want to propagate dedupe data? And we'll say yes, that means the duplicate information would not be just applied to your uh, parent, like a, like a duplicate custodian, but it would be applied to all the attachments. Um, no reason not to have it. I think it's more convenient that way. And finally, we get into our publish settings. Auto publish set, I always have it at no because you will get errors and you want to look at those errors. Uh, you want to see if you have um, any kind of crashes, any files that need to be retried. Maybe you have a lot of password protected files. Uh, you want to look at the errors and deal with them right away. I, I don't like just publishing data and then going back and figure out what the errors were. I would prefer to uh, do one step at a time. You process, you go to your errors, you fix your errors, you if there are any if there are any legitimate errors like corrupt files, you ignore them. Anything needs to be retried, you retry them. If there are any passwords, you put them, you retry them. Once you're done, you say processing is done and then you move it into a publishing step. So this way when your client starts seeing data, it's not incomplete data. You don't have to explain to somebody, well, yes, I published, but there will be more. And then they're asking, well, can I run my search now or is it the numbers gonna change? You know, it gets into that conversation. You, you know, you do one step, once you're done, you're done. You publish, you check it, you're done with publishing, you index. So lastly, we have our destination folder where we're going to publish to. Again, that's just up to you to configure. And do we want to use source folder structure? Usually you say yes, this way it'll rebuild your PST name, inbox, and so on. So folder structure will be preserved in folder tree.
And those are the most important things you need to know about setting up processing profile in relativity. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more files like it. Click the bell to get notified when I upload new videos. If you have any comments about this video, put them in the comment box below, as well as put any ideas for future videos that you would like to see on this channel. Thank you for watching.